Are you considering selling your home or any other type of real estate? Hi, I'm Associate Broker Wes Brooks. Thank you for tuning in to watch my video today. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be discussing some of the most commonly asked questions about selling real estate. So let's get started. We start with a comparable market analysis, also known as a CMA. By the study of the properties matching the size, style, criteria, and area of your home, we come to a reasonable marketing price together. I won't attempt to force you into a listing price that you're not happy with. However, I will supply information regarding the current real estate market and how it will affect the marketing and sale price of your home. We then complete the listing paperwork, including the seller disclosures and other related documents necessary for a smooth and accurate sale. As we move forward, there may be requests for additional documents such as death certificates, marriage licenses, trust documentation, etc. The marketing starts with professional photography and video. This may include aerial drone work and high quality still images and video. These images and videos will be used on the MLS, personalized custom websites, custom QR codes, social media sites, and many other advertising platforms. As the marketing gets started, I'll be processing your paperwork with our office staff and the title company. So we're ready to move forward at the moment an acceptable offer is presented. And here's Justin Bankston of Fidelity National Title to explain the process of pre-title work and what title insurance covers. Hi Justin. Thanks for having me on today to talk about title insurance and pre-title West. Uh, pre-title is an important part to the listing and closing process as a preliminary title commitment is ordered by the listing agent at the time or prior to listing. A pre-title commitment is important because it will show the owner of record who's able to sell the home and also any liens or encumbrances that may be against the property. This oftentimes will show some items that the seller may not be aware of. By eliminating these at the time of listing would alleviate any delays at the closing table once the property is under contract. The owner's title policy is paid for by the seller typically, and the mortgage title policy is gonna be paid by the buyer. Thanks for having me on, Wes. Thanks, Justin. I've been working with Justin for many years on most of my transactions. Once the marketing has started, we'll be expecting calls. All potential buyers will be accompanied by a Michigan licensed agent. These agents will schedule their showings through our office and each call to you will be coming directly from our call center. You'll have an opportunity to accept or decline showings. However, I do suggest accepting all showings as possible because buyers may not always necessarily have an opportunity to reschedule. Once an agent shows one of my listings, I reach out to them to request feedback from the showing. I share that information with my sellers. This will help us better understand how your property is fitting in with the ever-changing market regarding presentation and price. Of course, I also offer open houses for those sellers wanting that added exposure. I do understand that not all sellers wish to have open houses for various reasons. However, I do make them available for those that do. Many sellers offer home warranties with their listings. Here's professional home warranty specialist, Stacy Kraft, to explain what a home warranty covers during the listing period. So, Stacy, tell us, what does the home warranty cover? That's a great question, Wes. A seller's home warranty is free during the listing period. When thinking seller's home warranty, think peach, plumbing, electrical, appliances, cooling, and heating. Thanks, Wes. Thank you, Stacy. The word peach will help us remember what the warranty includes. While the home warranty is free to the seller, we can use it as a negotiating tool with buyers. If it's not negotiating the purchase agreement, the warranty evaporates at the closing table. When it comes to negotiating offers, we need to remember it's not only about the offer price. We look at three specific areas of the offer. We look at the price, the terms, and the conditions, and we keep in mind that each element is negotiable. 
Within the terms and conditions, we'll see if the buyer is asking for any personal items, such as a pool table or a lawnmower. We look at the EMD and the mortgage type. We also check to see if the buyer is asking for any seller concessions or perhaps a home warranty. Of course, we review other areas of the offer as well, such as the, any potential for a survey requirement or a title concerns. Understanding the complete language of the offer is critical. It's also important that all offers include a pre-approval letter or proof of funds for a cash buyer. Many ask, are pre-approvals really qualifying the buyer? To discuss this in more detail, I've asked mortgage broker Linda Sinicola to speak with us today about pre-approval process. Hi, Linda. Thanks, Wes. I'm Linda Sinicola of PLB Lending, and I'm here to talk to you, the seller, about why it's important to get a pre-approval letter with the offer to purchase your home. Um, the pre-approval letter is going to tell you that the buyer is able to close. And in knowing that, you need to know what we've done up until that point to get that buyer pre-approved. Um, we've actually pulled credit. We pull all three credit bureaus. So we've pulled Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, along with public records. So we know whether that buyer's had a past bankruptcy, foreclosure, or any open judgments. Um, we've obtained their income information, whether it be pay stubs, tax returns, W-2s, and we've evaluated the income that we're able to use. And then lastly, we've also obtained asset information, um, bank statements, 401k statements, any investments, any gift letters, if parents are gifting money. So the buyer on a pre-approval letter is, is solid. The information on them has been checked out. So your pre-approval is only gonna be subject to title work, getting the title on the house and having that clear, appraisal, getting a good um, appraisal for collateral, and the final underwrite of the buyer's information along with the title and the appraisal. So you can be assured that a buyer with a pre-approval is able to close. Thanks, Wes. So a buyer with a pre-approval letter should not have any concerns about closing if everything else goes as scheduled. Thank you, Linda. As a certified negotiating expert known as a CNE designation, I'm here to assist in all the negotiating process. Once an offer is accepted, due diligence must be maintained by all members of the transaction. The home inspection is performed and paid for by the buyer. But look closely at each offer. Some offers may require a seller to pay for some of the inspections, such as a water or sewer test, or perhaps a radon test. Inspection results may open up negotiations or for repairs and credits if an issue is found. We do have options for these. Appraisals are also a big part of the process. If the home is priced correctly for its location and condition, the appraisal shouldn't be an issue. However, when a seller price is too high, and an anxious buyer engages with a full price offer or during a multiple offer situation, an offer can be accepted higher than the current market value according to the appraiser. This hurdle can be overcome. An appraisal can be challenged by the parties within the transaction. If the challenge doesn't work, either the price needs to come down by the seller or the buyer may need to bring more cash to the closing table or it may be a combination of both. Remember, when negotiating, anything can be possible as long as all parties can reach an agreement. And that can also be said about the home inspection issues. Otherwise, a mutual release is signed by all parties and the home is placed back on the market in search for a new buyer. In which case, either the repairs should be made or a price adjustment is typically needed in order to get past the next inspection or appraisal. Keeping the transaction together with negotiating is typically the best option. If for some reason the buyer becomes unable to close due to a legitimate financing or inspection issue, the EMD is refunded to the buyer. Only when a buyer simply decides not to close without a justifiable cause or does not follow the terms and conditions of the purchase agreement will the EMD go to the seller. Earlier, I mentioned the phrase seller concession. A seller concession is sometimes requested within the offer by the buyer's lender to aid in the financing process. This concession is used to assist with the closing costs, prepaid fees, and cost adjustments for the buyer, such as property taxes and lending application fees. 
When a seller concession is in an offer, the actual offer price becomes the offer price minus the seller concession amount. This concession amount is not money paid directly to the buyer. It is simply an amount paid in the purchase agreement to be used by the lender to qualify the buyer into a specific loan program. The buyer is receiving a credit, not cash back, toward the closing documents. These funds are being applied to their overall costs of the mortgage and closing fees. All purchase agreements must contain some very specific language. The dates on the offer should be completely understood. The three most important dates on the offer will be the offer reply deadline, the closing date, and the occupancy date. If an offer is missing any of these three dates, it is not considered a legitimate offer. The closing date is an estimate and we strive to hit those dates. However, some transactions may require extensions in order to close. Often these extensions are caused by either an inspection or appraisal concern found during the transaction, which may have slowed the process down or perhaps by a member of the transaction who has not been practicing proper due diligence. Obtaining occupancy of the home by the buyer can be a huge concern in most cases. It's important for sellers to understand that once the transaction closes, the property now belongs to the new owner. If the seller has negotiated extra time to remain in the home after the closing, the seller instantly becomes a tenant and the seller is now liable for the buyer's new payments and the cost of owning the property. We refer to this as PITI, or Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. This fee is calculated by the purchaser's new cost of owning the home and divided by 30 as a daily rate. This PITI figure is the cost that the typical seller will be required to pay the purchaser until the full occupancy is granted to the buyer from the seller. This PITI figure has nothing to do with the seller's original cost of owning the home. The title company will hold these funds in escrow and pay out the funds as needed based on the prorated date of occupancy. The buyer will receive their rent and the balance will go to the seller. Once the lender grants the clear to close, the title company becomes the driving force behind the closing schedule. From the notification of the clear to close, it typically takes three to four days to close, but from the start of the transaction to the closing, it normally takes 30 to 45 days total to close a property. Prior to the closing, the water department and other utility service providers will need to be contacted. The seller remains liable for all utilities and maintenance until occupancy is granted to the buyer. This includes the homeowner's insurance. Now here's Leron Williams to tell us more about insurance concerns during the home sale. Welcome, Leron. Well, thanks, Wes. Um, when it comes to selling your home, having insurance is critical for the seller. Um, when you start to sell a property, if you're still living in that home, chances are your personal property and your belongings are still going to be in that home while it's being shown for sale. Um, your homeowner's policy will actually continue to offer the same coverage that it did before you listed the home. So this means that your liability is protected, um, your personal property is protected, as well as the dwelling of the home are all protected against the normal perils that it would be insured against even if you weren't listing it. Um, as part of the selling process, the seller is generally required to let any prospective buyers know about any insurance claims that were on the home. Um, this is important that this comes to the forefront of um, the selling process due to the fact that we want to make sure that the buyer is well aware of any um, inspections that may be, need to be done to the work and to the damage that was done to the home. And then additionally, if the seller finds that, or the buyer finds that um, the seller has too many claims on the home, there is a possibility that the home insurance at that property is just too expensive. And this can be a major issue for the buyer. Um, this is why it's important to really kind of talk and go over your policies and your claims with your real estate agent as well as uh, your insurance agent. Thanks, Wes. This goes back to pricing the home correctly for its condition as well as its location. Thanks, Laurent. In conclusion, I first hope that this presentation has been helpful in the understanding of the real estate marketing and sale process. I'm happy to discuss any additional questions that you may have. I want to also thank my guest today, Stacy Kraft, 
Laron Williams, Linda Sinicola, and Justin Bankston. And please keep in mind that by working with myself, associate broker, Wes Brooks, you'll have a team of experienced professionals working diligently, assisting in the entire process of the marketing and the closing of your home and property. I invite you to visit my YouTube network, Finding New Neighbors, to view many of my videos on the housing topics such as home inspections, seller concessions, EMD, and actual property listings, as well as many other videos. Pick up copies of my books about real estate and new construction from Author House Publishing or from any of the many online book outlets, including Amazon.com or at your local neighborhood bookstore. You can reach me by either texting or calling at 248-701-7660 or email me at findingnewneighbors at yahoo.com. And be sure to subscribe to Finding New Neighbors on YouTube and share my videos on your own social media platforms. I always appreciate the referrals. I want to thank you for watching and I look forward to hearing from you soon. So let's get started at Finding New Neighbors. Welcome back to the Remax Real Estate Insight Show. Have you noticed that real estate has moved online? Well, what I mean is that so much information about homes, listings, how to buy and sell has moved online. And really what we mean is social media platforms. Social media has become a preferred and often effective way to market real estate listings. The largest audiences for just about anybody in marketing these days can be found on platforms like Facebook, in Instagram, Instagram and YouTube. So what does this mean for you when you're selling your home? And what are the benefits your agents can and should bring for you when using social to market your home? Joining me is Wes Brooks. He is an associate broker. In addition to being a real estate agent, Wes is also a professional photographer and videographer. So he really comes with a nice resume to talk with us about all of this. So welcome to the show, Wes. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Oh, it's Thanks our pleasure to have you. So I guess let's just start off with the fact that not only are you a realtor, mm -hmm. but you're also, like I said, a professional photographer, professional right. videographer, kind of a unique combination. I don't see that every day. Is uh, Does the photography kind of come in with being a realtor? Was this something that predated your real estate license? Well, what happened was uh, back in the 70s, I got interested in photography. And by the late 70s, I was doing weddings and little league photos and motocross races and all kinds of things like that. That sounds like fun. Yeah.